the November 13, 2013 meeting of the Ascension Parish Planning Commission will now come to order. Uh, Madam Secretary, please note that all members are present with the exception of Mr. Josh Ori, who has welcomed uh, a set of twins into their household, so uh, we will excuse him from uh, attending tonight. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> brings us to agenda item number four, introduction of staff. Uh, Stacy, would you start, please? Stacy Webb, Secretary for Planning and Development. Lindsay Manda, Legal Counsel for Planning and Zoning. Michael Petty, Senior Project Manager. Ben Moran, Parish Planner. Lance Brock, Zoning Official. Tim Ward, Engineering. Thank you. Uh, item number five, Chairman's comments. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, tonight, because of uh, the way the, uh, the commissions are structured, we're going to have three meetings instead of two. We'll have a uh, planning commission, a zoning commission, and between those, we will have a joint planning and zoning commission. Because of the way the ordinances were set up, we're required to do this. So we will have um, three sets of minutes next week, next month, rather, to approve. Um, not sure how this happened. I think, uh, you know, when you put lawyers in charge, things like this happen. I'm, I don't know. Um, the other thing is that uh, after this meeting, I will have uh, completed my term as chair of this commission and of the zoning commission. So we will have on the agenda next month the election of a new chair and co-chair. So I'd like you to start considering who you may like to select for, that, uh, the, for those positions. Um, item number six. Uh, Approval or denial of the minutes of the October 9, 2013 Planning Commission meeting. What's your pleasure? Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Nizzo moves. Mr. I'll Chapisi second. seconds. Any objection? Minutes stand approved. Item 7 is the consent agenda. And again, we have two affidavits of mortgage declaration. This is something that uh, needs to be done so that this, the, uh, uh, we can have everything in order for these, um, for these divisions, simple divisions. Um, any uh, questions or would anybody like to, to, to bring up any of these, either of these uh, individually? If not, I'll, I'll entertain a motion for approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Uh, Mr. Bishop moves. Second. Uh, Mr. Uh, Burgess seconds. Any objection? Uh, the consent agenda stands <coughs> approved. Item number eight is the a public hearing to approve or deny the following family partition. Uh, the first one is uh, the Thomas N. Severio Senior Property, Lots 1, 2, 3, and 4. Mr. Quintmaw. Good evening. I'm Clint Quintmaw, representing W.J. Quintmaw Surveyors. Action for Planning Commission approval on the Thomas M. Severio uh, family partition. All comments have been addressed. Okay. Um, there was a, um, a, a request for a variance on the T turnaround requirement. What's the deal there? Yeah, as we can see, it ends at lot one, and due to the, the area and length, that can be extended. Uh, we just don't want to cut it off there at this time. Okay. Any uh, questions of commissioners? Okay, this does require a public hearing, so uh, at this point I will open the public hearing. Uh, do we have a card, Stacy? No, we don't. Okay. Okay, well then we can close the public hearing. Uh, any other questions or comments by commissioners? Uh, entertain a motion. I'll move for approval. Mr. Chafisi moves for approval. Second. Uh, Mr. Calendar seconds. Any objections? That family partition stands approved. Thank you. You have a good night. Okay. Uh, item number nine. Public hearing to approve the deny the following preliminary plat. Uh, the villas at Sagefield, first and second filings, uh, that's a revision. Uh, McLean and Associates. Is the petitioner here? Ellen Jackson with McLean and Associates represented this um, preliminary approval. There were some comments. We've addressed them asking for your approval. 
Commissioners, have any questions? All right. Uh, again, we, we need a public hearing to uh, uh, before we approve or deny this. So we'll open up the public hearing at this time. Uh, cards on this one, Stacy. <coughs> okay. <coughs> All right, then we can close the public hearing. And uh, if there are no other questions or concerns, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Uh, Mr. Callender moves to approve. Second. Uh, Mr. Chafisi seconds. Uh, any objection? That preliminary prat then stands approved. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Item number 10, a public hearing to approve or deny the following overlay, overlay zone site plan review. Uh, light industrial development standards, Jack McDowell, office warehouse, uh, Mr. Aguilar and Associates. How you doing? Thank you. My name is Brian Aguilar, BM Aguilar and Associates. We're just asking for approval of the building design, which is uh, regulated by the used to be business district, I think it's light, district, light industrial district now, for the front of the building design with the applicable requirements. Okay. And this is something I, I think this is the first that this commission has dealt with. Uh, Mr. Brock, is, can you give us a little background on, on the process here? What are we doing and why are we doing it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, according to the code uh, underneath light industrial, there's a light industrial district or light industrial review process that the planning commission has to approve. Uh, and those standards are spelled out in the, in the code itself. And uh, based on that, it's a, it's a review process that the commission a approves uh, his uh, development or his building, I guess you could say. Okay. And this this uh, area is light uh, industrial. Yes, sir. Okay, that that's right next to the the heavy industrial like plants down in, on um, on the river. Uh, it's basically it's this property right here is yes, sir. That's I'm sorry. Yes, sir. It's on is 73. It, uh, well, what side of Highway 30? It's going to be on the north side. So it's like you're going back toward uh -huh. toward Dutchtown. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. <coughs> okay. Um, uh, questions of commissioners. All right, then uh, again, we need a, a public hearing to uh, either approve or deny this, so I'll open up the public hearing. Uh, any uh, comment cards? Okay. All right, we'll close the public hearing then, and uh, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Nizo moves to approve. Second. Uh, second by Mr. Burgess. Any objection? That motion stands approved. B is Light Industrial Development Standards, uh, Adrian Wagesback, <coughs> Office Warehouse. Similar uh, deal? Yeah, Brian Aguilar again. This same same situation, uh, similar in construction and same zoning, just asking for approval for the building. Okay. And we see that staff again recommends approval of the plan review. Any um, questions or comments of commissioners? Let's open up the public hearing on this issue then. Uh, any cards? No. So we'll close the public hearing. And uh, uh, once again, I will entertain a motion for uh, this item 10B. I move for approval. Mr. Chafisi moves for approval. Second. Second by Mr. Callender. Any objection? That motion stands approved. Thank you. And the third one, uh, Light Industrial Development Standards, Adrian <coughs> Wagesback, B Office Warehouse. Uh, again, Mr. Aguilar. Uh, same thing. I'm sorry. We uh, there was two buildings there. I'm doing for the same uh, Mr. Adrian, side it's by uh, side, uh, almost identical in construction in the front. They're they're adjacent. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Any uh, questions, comments? I'll open up for a public hearing. No cards. We'll close the public hearing, and I will entertain a motion on this. Motion to approve. Mr. Mr. Nizo moves to approve. Second. Uh, Mr. Bishop seconds. Any objection? That motion stands approved. Okay. <clears throat> we will get go to our agenda item 11A, uh, revocation of servitude. Then we'll have a public hearing to recommend approval or deny to the council the following servitude rev revocation. <coughs> Carlino Place, second filing lots 15A1 and 15A3. It's on South Swamp Road in Prairieville. Uh, you are representing the petitioner? Yes. Okay. Uh, notice that we have uh, some concerns by Atmos. Can you address that for us? I think Atmos, as long as we didn't um, revoke that portion where the 12 foot utility servitude is, they would be okay. So we wouldn't revoke that portion anyway because it's already 
a servitude. Okay. Because that, that was the, the only objection, and uh, yeah. if you look at the wording of it, <coughs> it, it is a little, little vague as to, as to what they're objecting to and why, but I'm just uncomfortable uh, with the fact that uh, we don't have a clean slate of no objections. Well, it, it says it has no objection as far as, you know, we don't revoke that portion that's the 12-foot utility servitude that's running <coughs> along Carlino Drive and mm -hmm. Swamp Road. Okay, and y'all okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, staff? I think in this situation with, with Atmos's letter, uh, the best way to handle this is rather than the, uh, the original map that's in the packet where it shows the highlighted revocation of the servitude all the way to the roads that um, if, the, if the commission, you know, sees fit to, you know, recommend um, you know, to the council the revocation minus those two, and then we would just make a note that, you know, when the revised map is done, if the servitude is revoked, um, that the servitude does not show all the way to those utility servitudes at the okay. two roadways. So we could approve this <coughs> contingent upon the petitioner having a revised map sent in, to the council? In this scenario, because it's a revocation of a servitude, it has to go to council anyway. Right. So you're going to recommend to send it to council, and mm -hmm. you can recommend it with the modification to that map to show that you're not revoking it all the way to the roadway, that you're actually revoking it to those utility servitudes. And I think at that point, Atmos would, would not have an issue yeah. because, as, as Ms. Jackson uh, described, it, it's really the situation is they don't want to revoke it to the road because those are utility servitudes and there very well could be mm -hmm. facilities in those servitudes. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, now we need a public hearing for this as well. Well, before we do that, though, any, any questions by commissioners or, or uh, comments? Okay. All right, I'll open the public hearing. Do you have any cards, Stacy? Okay, so we can close the public hearing, and um, I will need someone to very carefully word this motion. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, I think we can uh, approve it as written, less the 12-foot portion of utility service outlined by Atmos, and make that recommendation to the board, to the council. I think that would suffice. That would suffice? Okay. Well, that's, that's our motion. I'll Have second it. it. Uh, Mr. Bishop seconds. Any objection? Okay, the motion stands approved. We'll recommend that to the council. Thank you. Okay, item, uh, agenda item 12. Uh, public hearing to recommend approval of denial to the parish council amendments to the Ascension Parish Unified Land Development Code. The first one, uh, 12A, is ordinance DR 13-11 revisions to the drainage regulations of the Unified Land Development Code pertaining to the placement of fill. Uh, and this is something that has been discussed um, on several occasions, at least the last two meetings that we were here. Um, Lance, you want to give us maybe a, a summary of the changes? I believe that, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, there's highlighted in some of the, the changes. Uh -huh. uh, I think elevate any structure. Uh, this is in 17507B of individual lots, um, and shall not the found, fill and shall not shall be limited to the foundation of the structures, and shall not extend more than 24 uh, inches beyond the limits of the foundation, mm -hmm. and the slopes, uh, the side slopes of the fill shall not be steeper than three horizontal to one vertical slope. And, uh, and I'm not sure if, he, I know that we discussed this at the last meeting and everything, and I don't know if he, if Ricky made all changes. I think, I don't think there's anything there other than just bringing it back, just yeah. based on the uh, yeah. last meeting that y'all, that we yeah. discussed last time in reference We had to quite a bit of discussion, and he said he was gonna, gonna really word it uh, in accordance with what we had kind of uh, had a consensus on uh, last meeting. Mr. Uh, Chairman? Okay. Yes. Yeah, I had recommended um, a change in the wording of this to make it a little more clear, and it didn't get incorporated in this. I talked to Ricky about it. We didn't have time to change it That's great. Uh, before this meeting. But if you look at the um, at paragraph B, uh, remember that we I'd suggested that we allow 
uh, the fill, rather than sloping down from, from the edge of the foundation down, that we allow the fill to come out horizontally for some amount, and we, and we agreed to a maximum of two feet. But the way it's worded is a little bit confusing. It says, uh, fill shall be limited to the foundation of the structure and shall not extend more than 24 inches beyond the limit of the foundation. The intention was that it not extend more than 24 inches horizontally and then beyond the limit before yeah. it begins to slope. So the language I suggested was that fill shall be limited to the foundation of the structures and to no more than 24 inches horizontally beyond the limits of the foundation before beginning to slope. Send, I sent that language to to uh, Ricky, Lance, I don't know if you saw it or not, no, but sir. I suggest that we make that change just to clarify that uh -huh. because it sounds like, you know, the fill will definitely be more than 24 inches beyond the foundation. It just will be sloping down. Yeah. So we just want to make sure that it's clear it's horizontal for 24 inches before it begins to slope. Okay. And then um, uh, paragraph or sentence C, um, let's see. I suggested we say that fill extending beyond the foundation of the structure or structures shall not be steeper than a three-foot horizontal to one-foot vertical slope, rather than just saying steeper than a three. To one. Well, I actually did make that yeah, change. He, he, okay, yeah, so he did that. that one was incorporated. The first one wasn't for some reason. So, if we would just make that change, I would be amenable to that. Okay. Any um, other comments? <clears throat> and I think that is that both on the um, on the next order individual well, lots and on yes sir he, right I see that he, he did put it on the lots larger than a half acre yeah and uh, he did put that in, in there right yes sir. so it's on both um, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. right both of those okay okay so that would need to be changed as well then. okay yes both in both <coughs> spots okay um, any other questions or comments? Okay, we uh, we need a public hearing to um, uh, b before we, we take action on this. So I'll open up the public hearing. Have any cards, Stacy? Okay, so we can close the public hearing. So we have ordinance DR 13-11. That's uh, agenda item 12A, uh, and uh, with a couple of. Uh, Amendments that Mr. Chafisi made. I'll entertain a motion. I so move. Uh, Mr. Bishop moves. Mr. Callender will second. Uh, any discussion? Any other discussion? Any objection? Okay, that is approved. Then we will recommend that ordinance to the uh, to the parish council. Uh, the next item is is B ordinance SR 13-14, revisions to the subdivision regulations of the United. Unified Land Development Code pertaining to protection of existing watersheds and conveyance system requirements. Uh, yeah, this is the, we discussed this uh, revision uh, last month. Mm -hmm. And just to, to clarify what is meant by impervious surface. Uh, clarify what is meant by what? Impervious. By the impervious surface. Okay. Uh, so we'd we like to change that, that to less, to less pervious. pervious. Yeah. Okay. Just uh, uh, so a clarification. Have an there. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So that uh, that is the only uh, change that we're recommending. And there is uh, an additional change on there, just um, a, a refer an incorrect re uh, reference. Okay. Uh, in in one of the paragraphs, <clears throat> it was uh, referencing a section that uh, is was taken out. Okay. All right. Um, any uh, questions of commissioners? Okay, we'll open a public hearing for this as well. Um, we have anyone? We have a speaker. Would you like to? Yeah, just uh, fill out a card and go ahead and talk, and we'll uh, handle it later. Identify yourself for the record, please. My name is Brian Aguilar again, BM Aguilar and Associates. Uh, I think this came up. I had asked Tim. Um, in discussion with clients and you know they asked me to come up with a design for a site and uh, the way I understood it was if you had 17,500 feet of impervious conditions or less then you weren't required to mitigate the runoff the added runoff uh, <coughs> with retention pond mm -hmm. um, and we got into a discussion about the definition of impervious 
I assumed impervious was impervious. Well, looking at the definition in the code, it states that uh, Ascension Parish's the drainage ordinance definition of impervious is anything that has been uh, improved by man. And it was a little deceiving uh, when I would try to explain this to my clients, and uh, they 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 were under the stand, under they were had the understanding that they could do 17,500 feet of concrete and building and uh, then do maybe gravel in, in the back of the building. And uh, in discussions with Tim, he, uh, they, they, he interprets that not to be correct. He interprets that anything, improvements to the property that exceed 17,500 square feet uh, fall under the, you, you have to have that much more added improvements to the property, then we would have to mitigate the runoff, which requires a lot of people to have retention ponds on small sites. So uh, if you have a one acre commercial site and you want to put a building and a parking lot in it, it doesn't leave you very much room. And I think there was an outcry when we first passed the, when you first passed the drainage ordinance, this, what, this exception was not a part of the drainage ordinance. And I think there was an outcry of, from the developers and citizens, private people building these small buildings on these small sites. And this was uh, an exception to the drainage ordinance at that time. Uh, and I had asked him to maybe clarify the definition of impervious. And I'm not sure, Tim, you said that uh, there was an added paragraph, a change to the uh, paragraph. Uh, no, we just changed the, the impervious to a less pervious. So the, it states now that there anything more than 17,500 square feet of improved conditions, is that? Uh, well, uh, sort of improved conditions, but if, like if you're going from a dirt to a, you know, a grass, it's, if it's the same kind of pervious area, uh, then <coughs> it wouldn't be included. But if you're going from a, gr from a grass, a uh, dirt to a gravel, it would be included. Okay. So you're including gravel as impervious conditions now, or more, uh, as yeah, less pervious. As less pervious. Yeah. Well, I think the, the intent of the whole thing is, is if you're increasing the amount of runoff uh, from the property in terms of how quickly the, the, the runoff occurs, then it's an, improve, then it's, uh, an improvement that, that's impacting the runoff. <coughs> you could do an improvement that, that slows the runoff down, and, and there are other mitigating uh, methods other than retention ponds, um, things, anything that'll slow the runoff off of the property can be considered an improvement that would uh, would not um, impact, you know, would not um, require that you do an, uh, a retention pond, for instance. You know, so there could be the, the whole intent of it, I, it. This was just to clarify the intent. The intent is if you're increasing the amount of runoff from the property, you have to mitigate it if it's over a certain. Certainly, if it's if it's concrete or or metal roof or whatever, it's completely impervious. Gravel road's not completely impervious, but and, and there probably are some guidelines that we could use to say, well, how much does that impact it compared to what it was before? If it was pasture before, you know, that, that absorbs quite a lot of rainfall before it starts running off. If it's gravel, um, how much does that absorb before it starts running off? Okay. Um, I don't know personally, but there are ways to figure that out. I don't, the intention wasn't, I don't think the intention was to say, Everything, every improvement, so-called improvement, is going to require, is going, that goes beyond the 17, was it 17,500? How much? Uh, yes. yes. Yeah, every, every improvement beyond that necessarily is an improvement that creates a, a more runoff. It might not. So basically. But you want to argue that the gravel, you know, I guess you'd have to argue with engineering. Does the gravel well, uh, create as much of a runoff problem as, as, it, as it was as a, what was it before, dirt road or pasture or whatever it was? And I have, and I think that's why we're here. So yeah. I was just trying to get it clarified. And, then, uh, you know, I understand uh, as, a, as a designer, I have no issues with it. I just think it's going to cause a few developers to uh, say, why can't I do that? Yeah. You know, so uh, I was just asking that it be clarified, and I think, I think, I think we can sympathize with that, and, and we could probably make some concessions when it when it seems reasonable to do that. 
but I, we'd also we should also look into other things that might uh, mitigate help mitigate other than retention ponds because you're right that's a very big expense and there's not always enough room <coughs> on the property to do a, a retention pond um, it's a maintenance issue and everything else but there are some other ways to uh, <coughs> to mitigate runoff talk okay. about that thank you okay thank you um, any other um, people want to comment okay we will uh, then close the, um, the public hearing um, any other questions of commissioners what is your pleasure on this item chairman move for approval uh, mr. Burgess moves for approval second second by mr. calendar any objection motion stands approved we'll recommend that to the to the council uh, 13 staff report uh, I want to mention here that um, mr. Compton is out uh, this evening his uh, his father is ill and he's, he's taking care of that so he's, he's he is not here uh, but he was asked by a couple of parish council members and I also uh, talked to him about this to start the process of looking at impact fees in Ascension Parish <coughs> this this is something that had been um, attempted about what eight nine years ago and um, uh, quite an extensive study was done a lot of a lot of work was done a lot of public input and so forth uh, the, uh, I was part of that group that that uh, that was working on that back then ended up with uh, a proposed ordinance that uh, I personally thought was uh, could have uh, been very effective uh, it did not uh, pass the council and, and that uh, impact fees died uh, at that point um, just in general an impact fee is uh, an attempt to uh, try to to get the, the 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 people who are moving into an area uh, the, the the new development in an area and uh, if they impact a certain uh, part of government function uh, that, uh, that that that's a cost that the, uh, we would find a way to assess that developer to pay for the impact uh, you know, on a simple basis if you take an impact fee for transportation uh, if you develop a subdivision and you increase the number of cars on the road that's going to increase the maintenance and, and, and maybe the need for, for additional uh, roads and so forth so that impact fee then would uh, would help to pay for the impact of the additional traffic uh, it's a very uh, uh, theoretically it's a very simple concept the uh, the the devil is as always is in the details of it um, and there's a there's a number of questions that would need to be asked um, uh, first of all what type of impact fee would we be talking about I mean when people move in uh, they impact the schools they impact the sewer they impact the traffic they may impact uh, several other things and it's a question of uh, what uh, particular impact do we want to address and then the nuts and bolts of how we do that how 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 it's done is uh, it's fairly complex so uh, we asked Ricky to uh, uh, to start this process going so he sent to us and it's uh, in, in our packet the original draft ordinance back from uh, what year was that 2006 2006 2008 yeah mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to, to look through it or, or, or read it uh, what we'd like to do is um, uh, maybe tonight just get the ball started and uh, see if anybody has any particular comments about it <clears throat> and perhaps at the next meeting if it's if it's your uh, wishes we can have a more detailed uh, Q&A with this maybe we can bring in some of the people who developed this original ordinance uh, ask them some questions and, and see what's going on uh, a big uh, item I think is going to be actual the, the the legality of it because uh, there have been court cases recently that that have challenged this concept and we need to look at at uh, at, at, the, at even the legality of uh, of impact fees but I think in general uh, the people who currently live in Ascension Parish would like for the people who are moving in to sho shoulder some of the burden of the impact that they cause to our parish and that's the whole point behind impact fees. Um, Lance, did, did, did uh, Mr. Compton speak with you about this? Uh, any comments that he wanted to make? No, sir, other than you know what he submitted and sent to you, other than this was the draft of the ordinance that was done in 2006 uh, from Charles Landry. 
and it's basically the the, the ordinance. This is the exact ordinance that was submitted. So, okay. yes, sir. All right, um, Chairman, the, the original ordinance was primarily well, it was essentially an, a transportation impact fee right, exactly. ordinance. Are we saying that we're we want to look at this in a broader way and look at potential wastewater impacts and other? Well, uh, we are saying whatever we uh, want to say. Okay. Uh, it, uh, the, the reason, uh, from, from my memory, the reason we, we stuck with transportation uh, when, when we did that originally was <coughs> it was probably the, the easiest and, and the, 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 as far as, as assigning a specific impact, you could actually look at uh, studies, you could look at what traffic does, when you look at what, what the cost of increased traffic, uh, and, and that, that's a lot easier to do than, say, uh, the cost of sewer, for example. It, it would be a little bit uh, um, uh, less specific. Um, well, if that's the case, then would we want to take the, would we want to separate those issues yeah. and just look at a transportation impact fee yeah. ordinance mm -hmm. and yeah. then possibly look at a separate yeah, perhaps more complex. Uh, there was even water. talk for a little while about about a school, uh, uh, an education uh, impact fee, because again, you can very specifically say if X number of people live in a subdivision, a certain percentage of them will impact the public school system, and buildings will have to be built. And you can get very specific on that. But the reason I think that that was pulled back was that uh, uh, it, they're just going to take one bite of that apple because it, uh, it would have gotten to be a very exorbitant uh, impact fee. Uh, personally, I, I, I would have been in support of uh, the school system uh, getting impact fees, mm. but uh, I understood that uh, you had to, to mm. kind of work on what, what you could get. Uh, but uh, in other areas of the country, you have a, a, a lot more uh, uh, higher impact fees than we see in this ordinance, and it does involve schools, and it does involve public safety and transportation and things such as that. Well, yeah, I've, I mentioned this before. I've lived in two other states, and both areas I lived in had impact, development impact fees. Uh, they were primarily transportation. I don't recall impact fees on, on other things, yeah. uh, possibly wastewater, but they were definitely transportation impact fees, yeah. even, even to the extent of improving uh, or adding or paying for a portion of the interstate system in Southern California. <coughs> so mm -hmm. that was... Of course, that was, that was when development was absolutely booming in Southern California, mm -hmm. and they could probably do that right. and get away with it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bishop? Are we considering exacting this fee from individuals who build a house on a, a piece of acre of land, or are we talking about exacting impact fees from developers of major subdivisions? Does every individual who builds any structure anywhere where anybody might go to it have to pay an impact fee, or are we only talking about what we consider or a regulation say is a major subdivision oh. here. And that would be an issue that, that we could discuss. I think that uh, this particular ordinance had to do with uh, subdivisions, developments, as opposed to uh, if you've already, you already owned property and you, you build a house that was, uh, that was part of that, I'm not sure that that was, was included in there. But it's something that we need to, uh, to look at. So I, I think uh, maybe by next meeting, if you all want to continue this discussion, uh, we could spend a little bit of time in advance looking at the specifics of it and uh, maybe getting some, some resources here to, to talk through the, 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 the language of it and, and then perhaps uh, some legal uh, opinion as to uh, where we stand with that. Do we know if this was modeled um, after any other area, some other area that enforces impact fees? Yeah. Well, it, it was, uh, uh, as I, I remember, they looked at, at several um, counties in Florida and, and, and based the structure of it on that, uh, if I remember correctly. Isn't that right, Lance? I think so. And I also, I also remember St. Tammany being in there somewhere. But that was also the time that I think that Mr. Donald stated that there was a, there was a legal battle there. There was lawsuits. So I don't know exactly what happened with that. I do remember at that time that I think it was with that 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 St. Tammany, and I think they were going through some lawsuits of some sort. So, yeah. can, can we get a resource that would give us the lay, lay of the land on what legally yeah. is out there, and at the same time, what types of impact fees have been used in the past, you know, yeah. recently, like maybe yeah. from 
CPEX or the MPO. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I, and in talking with Mr. Compton, uh, Mr. Charles Landry was the uh, uh, the per person. He's an attorney. He he put this together. I think he specialized in that. Uh, and if if possible, if we could get him here at our next meeting, I think that would be very good to uh, to answer a lot of these questions. Right. And I would like to him to address specifically uh, Kuntz versus St. James uh, St. John's River Water Management uh, District. Uh, Supreme Court case that was decided on June 25, 2013, that thought by legal scholars is going to have a large impact on all impact fees. fees. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, fee, well, not only impact fees, but um, uh -huh. but uh, but uh, lots of impact system. on land use regulation. Also, do, are we um, thinking of exacting or, or should we discuss whether this is only for residential development or for industrial development? For instance, if there's uh, the new shell plant being built and there are 10,000 workers driving there, should the industrial developer have an impact fee because of the traffic caused by uh, all of the workers going to drive to the construction site. Yeah, yeah. There's there's uh, uh, certainly a, a large number of issues that we can bring up, and I would uh, encourage you to look through this and, and think about questions that we would need to ask before we take the next step in in uh, you know, if there's another step that we want to take in terms of uh, the impact fees. I, th I think this is a step in a in a positive direction because. <clears throat> The parish is growing. Yes. It's apparent there, there are a variety of impacts that are uh, being imposed on the resources here. But yet, I would like some discussion from probably some professionals as I reviewed this document. For example, ex exemptions. Right. Exemptions for additions. Well, it seems like to me some additions can bring about an impact. Why do we want to exempt that? Mm -hmm. So obviously, I would like to hear from someone to explain certain sections of this document right. to devil's advocate. Why are we doing this? I, I can appreciate the intent and spirit behind this. Yes, we need to, somehow we need to fund these impacts that are placed upon yeah. us. I just need to understand some of the things that I read. I glanced at it like, mm -hmm. why are we exempting this? Mm -hmm. So yes, right. I would like further discussion, yeah. mm -hmm. maybe public notice and draw some professionals in. Right. Mm -hmm. Also, I'd like to discuss whether, you know, the popular mantra a while back was that rooftops cost money to uh, political subdivision <clears throat> and since then there's been many studies that show instead of costing money to a, a, a subdivision I mean a political subdivision a parish or a county or a state instead of each of those new residences or rooftops as they call them exacting money from the from the political body they're actually net contributors and so we need to discuss whether they actually cost the public anything by moving here or not right and uh, that would depend on the, the tax structure of the of the individual mm -hmm. governing right. unit in some places where property taxes are really high they probably would be a net positive uh, but then there's those are all mm -hmm. questions that we need to uh, to, to bring up and, and talk about so I would uh, suggest that we uh, continue maybe at the level of staff report, not certainly not ready to, to, to vote on an ordinance or anything like that, but be prepared to, to have a list of questions. We'll get the resources we hope to, uh, that can answer those, and uh, perhaps we can uh, generate interest from the public in, uh, in, in looking at this issue. Okay. Okay, anything else in the staff report, Lance? That's it. Okay, uh, item 14 is the engineering staff report. Tim? Uh, well, first of all, we want to introduce a, a revision to uh, 1740 uh, There are two paragraphs that we would like to have revisions to uh, based on talking to our drainage director. Uh, the first of all is uh, currently the, the code requires a 30-foot servitude uh, from the inlet to the outlet of the ponds. And talking to the drainage director, he'd like to make it 
if we're taking off-site off drainage, we want that servitude going through the pond. But if we're not taking off-site drainage and it's only a drainage for the subdivision, we do not want to, uh, to have that servitude in there. You wouldn't require it then, huh? <laughs> okay. And then the, the second part of this is also uh, there is now a requirement to have five-foot fences uh, around the the ponds uh, regardless I mean if, if they're there or, or on the channels rather and no matter what uh, it requires a five-foot uh, fence and the drainage director would like to have his option because sometimes we don't really you know, want those uh, five-foot fences on there and he'd like to be able to have the option to, uh, of requiring it And maybe it could be worded as he would have the option to waive the requirement rather than, I, I, don't, I don't know that that makes a difference legally, but. Uh. No, it can't be an arbitrary choice. He can't rule this way for this person and rule yeah, that way for another person. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> but at, at some in, in some cases, they would definitely need the five-foot uh, fence, right? I mean, I uh, actually, since I've been here, we've never really needed it. I've always seen it in there that, uh, and we always require it. But, okay. Um, so there's no really point in having the fence. Not, not usually. Okay. He'd like, to, if there is, yeah, he'd like to have the option to put it there. But what was the purpose in the first place? A safety issue? I would assume so. Yeah, they're they're um, in. Uh, I deal a lot with drainage in in uh, Orleans and. Uh, the fence is put up often because it's an attractive nuisance. There are huge canals there, though, and they're deep, sometimes concrete line canals. If you fall into the canal, you can't get out. There's no way to get out. Mm -hmm. So there, the fences are put up. There. It's safety because it's an attractive nuisance. But wouldn't that um, be a responsibility of the property owner rather than us requiring that? Well, we have a servitude. Well, if, if we have a servitude on it, then it would be <laughs> our yeah. responsibility. I say we, you know, Give him, give him the prerogative of, of requiring the fence if he thinks it's necessary. <coughs> it is somewhat subjective, but yeah. you'd have a reason for doing it, right? Uh, and yeah, that's the point. Yeah. So you don't ordinarily need it. So if you put you may uh, require, if you believe it's a safety or issue or an attractive nuisance, you would require the fence. Uh, I, believe, I, I believe that would be the, the case. I would like okay. to ask uh, Lindsay, in Louisiana, is a pond in a pasture, for instance, an attractive nuisance? Not to my knowledge. I, I don't think it is either. Yeah. We're talking about drainage ditches here, right. drainage canals. Usually slopes. Uh, kids fall into mm -hmm. them. You know, and when there's a heavy rainfall, there's a, there's often a torrent of water going through. Yeah. It's dangerous. It could be dangerous. So in areas in New Orleans where that's the case, they put fences up. Mm -hmm. Not everywhere, but they do. So. All right. So. Um, then we could, if it is your wish, we could um, put this ordinance on the agenda of the next meeting for uh, uh, public hearing and vote and recommend to the council. Is it, uh, yep. Do we need a motion, I guess, to, to that effect? Okay, Mr. Bishop moves. Second. Mr. Calendar seconds. So we'll put that on the agenda for the, uh, for the December meeting. Okay, so that brings us to item number 15, adjourn. We should do adjourn. We'll adjourn. Uh, we'll start the next meeting, the joint meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission, in about three or four minutes. <laughs>